The book is about our relationship with a bear, but it centers on some horrific bear maulings that took place on the edge of Banff in 1980. The attacker was a mysterious black-colored animal that nobody saw but its victims. The events haunted me for a long time, and I knew that I would have to give an account of them someday as one who had participated in the hunt for the bear. I struggled to find a narrative framework to tell a complicated story. A few years ago, I finally realized what I had to do. I had to tell part of the story from the point of view of the bears involved, because back at that time, I remember how we stood around the swamp wondering what was going on in the head of the Whiskey Creek Mauler and what he was going to do next. I have given the bear the name Sticky Mouth, a translation of a Picani Indian word, Paskikoyi, for the bear. We're in the swamp at this point in the story and trying to find a bear that's responsible for the first attack on Ernest Coho. At 4.30 p.m., the helicopter lifted off and the aerial search began. In 1980, Jeff Palmer, the pilot, was 30 years old and had been flying helicopters for seven years. He's a compact five foot seven today with a trim and efficient build suited for the cockpit. His fine features often arrange themselves into an engaging smile. In the Jet Ranger that afternoon, Palmer was focused on flying a methodical grid search 50 feet above the treetops, while his passengers in the back seat leaned as far out the doors as their seat belts allowed to get a better view, rifles at the ready. He was angling across the northeast quadrant of the wetlands when he caught sight of some movement at the edge of the trees. There was a dark colored animal below digging at the ground. He kicked in some pedal and eased the collective over to turn the machine as he descended, trying to give Warden Bill Vroom a look at the animal from the right rear door. Palmer realized that this was indeed a bear. The bear looked up, he recalled, kind of like we're just a mosquito up there. It turned as if to go back to what it was doing. Then it suddenly changed its mind and ran off into the woods. After the first two-leg hunters leave the swamp, Sticky Mouth roams in a desultory fashion through the bush, having temporarily forgotten about hunting down the fat imposter bears, but aware only that he's very hungry. The imposter bears are the black bears from his point of view. He's uneasy, wandering in the broad daylight, this close to the dens of the two legs, but roused from his daybed by them, he's temporarily out of sync with his habits. What holds his attention still is the odor of ripe fish and beef drifting on the wind. His belly is doing any thinking he's capable of just then, and it pushes him toward the cowfish kill. He can smell it in the distance, and he drools at the rich stink. He pauses in a small clearing, detained by an ancient red ant nest that humps above the frost tussocks. Ever the ready opportunist, he tears into it with one paw and begins licking up hundreds of tasty ants and fat white larvae with great relish. The tart and ticklish pleasures of that feast are suddenly interrupted by a roaring noise to the east. He turns and sits back on his rump, his face swarming with ants, which he licks with absent-minded insouciance off his chin with a long pink tongue. He cocks his stubby rounded ears, listening. And now he's the Winnie the Pooh-like bear, not the thing of nightmares that those who have felt the power of a grizzly bear will remember for the rest of their lives. The sound is familiar. What does that familiarity trigger in that great whiskey barrel of a head? Perhaps an image of a cyclopean dragonfly, the very one that now roars into sight. This flying thing often frightened the sky above the swamp. He had learned to avoid its huge glass eye and watch it carefully from deep cover. The speed of its approach this time catches him in the open. He rises from his haunches and turns, showing as much dignity as he can under the circumstances, about to stalk back into the bush, away from the bellicose insect. This time, the flying thing comes closer than it ever has before, making his hackles rise in protest. Its hot breath blasts down at him, rattling the willow branches together and riffling through his fur. 
Thrilled to fury at something with the nerve to actually reach out and touch him, he turns his great head, his ears flattened against his skull to glare at it. And he smells its oily breath that is neither meat nor insect, but more like the smell of the sticky meat maker in hot sunlight. The smell of those shiny beasts on black feet that roar and whistle as they roll down that hot trail.